Yo, it's your boy GT here from the Gangster Times. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Also hit me up on Instagram, which is gangstertimes underscore official. And on my Snapchat, type in the search box, Gangster Times. So it's believed that a gang shifted such amounts of drugs that they actually had to document their trade on spreadsheets. The Liverpool-based gang moved 170 kilos of cocaine, 11 kilos of heroin and 290 kilos of cannabis worth more than £8 million in total in the space of just two months. They were so confident that their EncroChat encrypted phones were impenetrable, they abandoned traditional tick lists in favour of Microsoft Excel. Liverpool Crown Court heard today how the business grew to such a scale that professionalism was needed and records had to be kept before it all came crashing down as police raids on September the 11th last year. Stephen McNally, prosecuting, said this was not the stuff of tick lists or scraps of paper. This was the stuff of spreadsheets. The court heard the gang's alleged ringleader, Callum Hogg, a.k.a. the EncroChat user Speedy Herder, remains at large. But his cousin, the former boxer Ryan Mulcahy, who's 29, along with Anthony Connolly, who's 30, Liam Hughes, who's 24, Hughes' dad, Brian Marshall, who's 46, and Jack Pritchard, who's 29, today appeared for sentencing. The prosecutor said the operation had international links to Morocco, Spain and Dubai and connections across the UK to London and Cardiff. Mulcahy went under the handle base belt, Connolly was ordinary dingo and Hughes was bleak moth. No devices were attributed to Marshall or Pritchard. The case covered plots from January to September 2020 but the extent of the EncroChat data recovered when the secret phone network was hacked was so big that investigators decided to focus on May the 10th to June the 13th. Referring to the amounts of Class A drugs, Mr McNally said, the figures involved are quite simply eye-watering. He added the figures that have been reached are not fanciful evaluations or exaggerated numbers. These are based principally on the group's own data and records, their own conversations and their own admissions. Liam Hughes said during an interview that he'd been involved in criminality for about six years and at this level for about two years. He said that he earned between four to eight grand a month, and that was for about six months prior to his arrest, a bit less than the £100,000 cash that came through his address every week. The group used six slot cars fitted with bespoke hides designed to conceal drugs and cash. Mr McNally said the hide in a golden Renault Scenic registered to Marshall and driven by Pritchard to Wales on June the 1st had the capacity to hold approximately 15 kilos of drugs or £150,000 in cash. When talking with another Encro user, Nutty Elk, on April the 10th, Mulcahy boasted, man, it's a proper stash car, plod can't find, costs 12k. Mr McNally said, this is demonstrative of the level of sophistication and also the expense and effort invested in protecting their lucrative business. Such was the quality of the installation work in that Renault Scenic that it was searched on three occasions before the hidden slot was actually identified. Connolly, who previously lived in a city centre apartment, transported and collected money and drugs on a daily basis. He also coordinated the slot cars and was the accountant who kept track of finances and stock on the laptop. When his home in Melling was raided, officers seized the MacBook Pro along with £670 in cash. Connolly had sent screenshots of spreadsheets to Hogg and Hughes, which detailed amounts and brands of cocaine supplied and at what price. The court heard these spreadsheets show that in May alone the group supplied 64 kilos of cocaine to customers for £2.2 .2 million, receiving around £925,000 and appeared to bank £745,000. Mr McNally said largely due to the Covid lockdown, business was described as quiet. He said the Crown can only imagine the quantities that would have been involved should they have been busy. So prosecutors said Mulcahy, who's from Kirkdale, sat just below Hogg in terms of cannabis plots and coordinated the distribution of this drug while also directing Connolly in collecting and delivering cash. Mr McNally said Hughes's home was used as a safe house for large quantities of cash and Class A drugs which were weighed and bashed for onward supply. The police seized just under a quarter of a million pounds from a cupboard above his oven. They also seized a kilo of cocaine, a kilo of benzocaine, a vacuum sealing machine and cannabis. Mr McNally said these are amounts of cash the Crown says would be the stuff of lottery winnings to most of the general public yet 
Mr Hughes had that lying around in plastic bags at his home address. Marshall also worked as a courier who made 10 identified trips in slot cars to Cardiff and London and Pritchard was another courier who made three journeys to Wales. He was arrested in Cardiff on June the 1st with 5 kilos of cocaine, mostly 80% pure and valued at around £200,000 which was hidden in the scenic. Judge Stewart Driver QC said the quantities of drugs were very high over the two month period but the plot ran for nine months overall so the true figures must be even higher. He said the quantities of cocaine were so high that if prosecutors had said the gang played leading roles in that plot as opposed to significant roles, the Crown in fact accepted, then the sentences before credit for pleas would have started at 20 years plus. So Connolly admitted conspiring to supply cocaine and cannabis and to convert criminal property. He was jailed for 14 and a half years. Hughes admitted conspiracy to supplying cocaine, heroin and cannabis and to convert criminal property and possessing cannabis. He was also jailed for 14 and a half years. Marshall admitted supplying. Marshall admitted conspiracy to supply cocaine. He was jailed for 10 years. Mulcahy admitted conspiracy to supply cannabis and to convert criminal property. He was jailed for six and a half years. And Pritchard admitted conspiracy to supplying cocaine and he was jailed for 10 years. So speaking after the case, Detective Inspector Chris Lowe said, these are significant sentences which reflect the extent of the conspiracy that these men were involved in. Our work remains ongoing on a daily basis to target the people responsible for serious and organised crime, including drug supply. The gang thought they were untouchable, but we have a proven track record in dealing with individuals who are responsible for the wholesale supply of illegal drugs, both locally and across the country, as well as the use of violence to protect their business interests. He went on to say we have been working closely with partner agencies and neighbouring police forces to target the people who are responsible for bringing misery to our streets. Absolute madness guys, check that out. A Liverpool based gang who moved 170 kilos of cocaine, 11 kilos of heroin, 290 kilos of cannabis have been jailed. Let me know what you guys think, it's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.